All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to yet another episode of 100 Apps, 100 Hours. I'm your host, Brian Gillespie, developer advocate here at Directus. And I got a doozy today. It's one, honestly, I've not been looking forward to. So if you're new to the show, uh, basically we rebuild or try to build some of your favorite app ideas in 60 minutes or less or publicly fail trying. I fell a lot, but that's okay. We learn something each time. Uh, there are only two rules to this. You have 60 minutes to plan and build, which always ends up not being enough time. And rule number two is use whatever you have at your disposal, kind of the anti-rule. So with that, let's fire into this episode, the social media platform. Uh, again, I, like I said, I've not been looking forward to this. What are we going to be building uh, we're going to try to build something similar to Twitter, uh, where we've got a feed of posts from different people that we're going to follow on social. And um, that is what it is. So, uh, again, it should be an interesting episode. Let's get started on the clock. Start the timer and away we go, right? So when I look at a social media platform like Twitter, you've got a list of posts, you've got users that are on the service. You can follow people, you can favorite their posts, but as far as the functionality we're really looking for out of this, uh, let's define it, right? When we go to plan here, we're going to um, register users, uh, which I've already got set up uh, inside of my example project that I use all the time in these shows. Uh, we want to follow other users, create a feed of chirps. Uh, we won't call them tweet, we'll call them chirps. Sounds great. Uh, let's shrink this down. This is going to be our functionality needed. All right, that seems like a <clears throat> pretty good functionality set for this. Um, again, yeah, I can't stress how much fun I'm looking forward to having on this episode. All right. Um, now, as far as our data model, you know, when you kind of break it down, uh, there's the obvious ones like users, right? So if I do some diagramming here, we have our users. These are actually going to come from our Directus users collection that Directus gives us out of the box. Um, that gives us auth and permissions and all the fancy stuff that we're really interested in. So we'll have Directus users, and then we've got the chirps. Uh, as far as a chirp, it probably has, what, like some content. Um, maybe there's an image or a video. Uh, you know, this could just be a file if we wanted to share that and then a timestamp or uh, created at date, right? Those are our chirps. Uh, those have a relationship back to the user. There's a user that chirped uh, so we can represent that. And then uh, what else are we going to have here? We're going to have some followers, right? So uh, basically the the users are going to follow themselves, but because that's a many to many relationship, we're going to need like a separate table for this. So <clears throat> when we talk about this, we're going to have a follower, follower ID. So this is, I am the follower, um, uh, follow E. I always hate naming stuff. Follow E ID followed. ID. Uh, so again, those are going to be a two-way relationship with users. And then um, what else do we have, right? We're the other part that I'm not 100% sure about. Uh, we've got this feed that is unique for each user, right? So to me, that means a separate collection. So we have feeds. Um, we've got a user that's associated to the feed. And then what else do we have, right? Uh, we're going to have followers, feeds. The feed is going to be a 
or like updated at. When was the feed last updated? And I'm trying to think of like the other paradigm here. We're gonna just have a like the actual tweets that are or chirps that are in that feed. All right, and then that means we need like a junction table as well. Feed chirps. So this will be the chirp and the feed. All right, so I, I think this is the, the data model that I wanna go with for this. We'll see how this actually plays out. Uh, as far as what I've got set up, right, is the standard config that I use for all these episodes. If you've ever caught one of the past episodes, uh, I've just got a little Nux starter application that has a, a couple of routes, like a register and a login. Uh, let me just clear my cookies so we can see what those look like, right? Uh, just a register and login route. Uh, I've got a Directus SDK plugin configured here. Uh, so we just create a REST client. There's also a real-time client in case I decide that we need to use real-time in this. And then on the other side of it, I've got a blank Directus instance, uh, just a single admin user. So, all right, let's get to work on our data model. That's what we're gonna bang out first. And like I said, we've already got Directus users here. Let's work on our chirps. So that will be the first collection that we create. And I could zoom way in inside the Directus instance here. And do I really, am I concerned with the primary key field for these being UUID or auto incremented integer? Um, you know, typically I'm choosing UUID, but in, in this case, you know, maybe integer is, is fine really. Um, for created on, we're going to do created at and created by, we're just going to do the user. I'm going to call that user ID. So whatever user creates this chirp, that'll be saved in the database. And then whenever they create this chirp will be saved as well. Um, once the chirp is out there, it is gone. We are not going to allow editing or anything like that. Uh, and as far as our content, <clears throat> maybe we want to support Markdown for this. Message content, chirp content, sounds good. And then, um, you know, let's get wild with it and maybe even support a file. You can upload a single file to your chirp to share. All right. so. That's our model. I'm gonna unhide these other fields here just so I could see these when I look at them. And next I want to, I'm just gonna chirp. Chirp, chirp. Save it. And you'll see that saves the admin user and the date. And now we've got our first chirp for this social media platform. I don't know what we're gonna call this. Why, why not? I think why is, uh, I, the example that uh, our CTO, Reich Van Zanten, used in uh, one of his talks. So, all right, um, what's next? We're gonna do our followers, right? So we have our followers. And in this case, we have got um, really not concerned with any of those other fields. Uh, what we're gonna do, <clears throat> I want to go into my data model. I'm, I'm gonna to go to our system collection, right? And we're gonna do a directus users and we're gonna go in and create a many to many relationship here. It's gonna be followers. We're gonna to go to the followers table. And what do we have here? We've got the Directus user, this is the follower, follow E ID. This will be the follower ID. I think. All right, is that gonna work out? We got followers, we're good. Um. Uh, 
And then we could add... Oh, that's our... Where do we have that? Uh, follow words collection. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to add that, right? Great. Uh, and then if we delete any of these other items, we're basically just going to... Like if somebody, if a user gets deleted or a follower gets deleted, we're just going to remove those. So, okay. <clears throat> I hope that's gonna give us what we're looking for. So now we've got a followers table and junction direct us users followers. Oh, um, okay. So it's created that extra table for me. Why did it do that? Uh, because I have a relationship there. Hmm. That's some unexpected behavior, but I'd be okay. We'll roll with that. So on our user, this table is pretty much worthless. We'll just remove that. Unexpected error. Okay. Uh, fun stuff as always. Let's, let's try this over again, right? We've got uh, followers. We're just going to delete that. Now that table is removed. We'll do a, another mini to mini. And we'll call it followers. And actually the related collection here we want is directus users and not followers. Uh, so that's where I goofed up originally. And we're going to call this followers. That'll be our new collection. We've got the follow E ID and then the follower ID. And I think this will get us what we want. Uh, so this will be follow ease. All right, uh, let's try that. See if that gets us what we want. So now we have followers and follow ease, and then we have a table called followers that we can inspect and make sure everything is looking correct. All right, great. So we've got that set. Now we're gonna work on our feeds, right? Whenever I want to I like check my feed. I, I need some way to store the posts that are going into that specific feed. So we'll have a feeds collection. Uh, again, this could be auto incremented. And for the feed side of it, basically we're gonna have a, when was this feed updated? Uh, let's do updated at, just carry that same one. I, I really love these optional system fields inside Directus. Uh, again, it just gives you some of that functionality that you need, like timestamps and status and things like that baked right out of the gate. All right, so we've got a feed. We've got uh, updated at. Uh, we've got a, we're going to have to add a user to this feed, right? So this is a <clears throat> user that's going to be a mini to one relationship to the users collection, direct us users. <clears throat> and then if I open up the uh, advanced settings for, for any of these fields that I'm creating, uh, I could go in and create the corresponding field, right? So I can add additional feeds for this specific user. Uh, you know, maybe we wanted to subscribe to different topics or something like that. Uh, so on delete of direct us users, we want to delete the feeds item because there's no need for a feed for a user that is not around, right? And when it comes to our display template, I can also go in and uh, control what this will actually display here as well. Uh, just a nice thing if you're doing a lot of editing inside the Directus Data Studio. So we've got the updated at, uh, there's the user, and then we're gonna need a, another relationship between the chirps and the feed, right? So we need to know what are all the chirps within that specific feed. So um, da, 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 da. how are we gonna do this? 
that'll be a many to many relationship again uh, because a one chirp could be in many different feeds. So we'll go here inside direct us. We'll just search for the many to many relationship, right? And we are currently where we're on feeds. So this will be our chirps. We'll add chirps as the related collection here. We'll show a link and I'm going to go into the relationship under advanced settings in case I want to add this, right? This is the feed ID. This is the chirp ID. Sounds great. Looks good. And then we can add the inverse relationship if we want. So we could look at a chirp and see all the feeds that it's involved in. Um, I'm not sure we necessarily need that either. As far as the sort field, we're just going to sort by the, uh, the timing of the specific chirp. All right. So I, with that, I think we've got our data model like pretty fleshed out here. We've got the users already. We've got chirps, we've got followers, we've got feeds. Cool. Um, as a user, I could go in and, um, I could subs follow someone, follow E, uh, except I don't have any actual users to follow at this point, right? So if we turn our attention to the front end of the project, I can go ahead and register a new user, right? Um, let's call this uh, Edon Busk at example.com and we'll give this a very secure exam mole. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if we go to log in now, we should see we're already logged in. Great. Do I see a user here? I do. Uh, Elon Busk should have added a first name and last name to the actual registration form. Huh? Um, cool. So now I've got users that I can actually follow inside this. So if I go into my admin user, I should be able to add Elon Busk as one of my followees. Ah, man, that terminology is going to trip me up the whole time. I should have done something else. Following or something like that. All right, so <clears throat> now... Uh, we don't have a feed for this. So one of the things that we could do inside Directus, whenever a, a new user is created, you probably want to add a feed for them, right? So a couple ways you could go about that. Um, one way is just flows, right? So flows are automations inside Directus that we can create. Uh, and I could trigger these based on a number of different actions. So we're just going to do a, a create profile or cr create feed for new users. Okay, uh, as far as a trigger setup, we're going to do a, an event hook. And the action we want to be is non-blocking and should be whenever we, is there a way to do it? Whenever a user is created, auth.create, uh, auth.update. Uh, so whenever items are created, and I just am going to do the directest users collection here. So we're going to trigger this whenever a new user is created, right? If I go in and I'll just throw these up side by side, right? I'm already logged in. Let me just destroy this. Now we'll register a new user, new user at example.com. Do password. User has been created. If I refresh this, we could see that. Great. Uh, we can see there's the user. There's the key that we're interested in, right? And now I'm just going to go in and create a feed for this. Create feed. All right, so there's our feed. And as far as the feed data model, I'm just going to duplicate this because I do not remember what that looked like. Hazard of the gig. Right, so if I look at the feed, we've got a user and we've got chirps. Uh, so we'll just have one param that we're going to pass. And ta -ta -ta. we could even add like a, a system message if we wanted to. But for now, let's just create the feed. 
So we'll add an operation for it. We're going to create data. We're going to create a feed. And then inside the payload, we've got the user key. And then we're going to dynamically pull information from the trigger for this. So trigger.key. And we'll just use that mustache syntax. And this should get us what we want. Uh, we'll do full access. And let me just check that one more time. Trigger.key. Okay, great. Save. And now let's try this again, right? Uh, I see zero feeds in here. I'm just going to remove my session token. And we'll try john at example.com. Hit password. So we should have a John and example here, and we can see we've got a feed for that user now as well. Great, perfect. All right, so <clears throat> if we go back to our functionality that we need, we can register users, right? Um, do we have the ability to follow other users? In this case, yes, we do. We don't have it wired up to the front end yet, but let's, let's stay focused on Directus, right? Um, if I am following someone, um, and this is not showing up really nicely, so let's just edit the interface for this. Uh, we are going to show the avatar thumbnail with a first name, last name, and I can just copy this display template here, and I can do that same thing here. So the, the difference between the interface and the display the interface shows up on the form itself. So when you're in that detail view, the display shows up on the layouts. So if I'm here looking at a list of followers, this is the display and this is the actual interface, right? Um, so let's go back in to our followers and we'll, we'll fix this one as well. Should just be able to copy, paste the same thing. Great, cool, cool, there it is. We've got our followers, followees. Now, if I am following Elon Musk, great name, by the way, um, anytime he chirps, it should populate into my feed, right? So uh, if I look at my feed, I don't have a feed yet. So let's create a feed for me. And here's, uh, here's my feed. I can't really tell which one that is. So we'll just fix that really quickly as well. Uh, we'll show a display the directest user. Great, cool. All right, so now I can see there's my feed. There's John's feed. Anytime Elon Dusk tweets, I want to populate that into uh, a feed, right? Or let's say if I go into John's user, for example, John Doe, maybe John Doe is following me. Uh, so if we add me as an admin user, that'll be a good example, right? If I chirp, chirp again, right? This is, uh, again, this is just writing it to the SQL database. Um, direct is, is, a, is a nice complement to that. Right? Like whatever changes I'm making here are being mirrored. But uh, I chirp. If I go to the feed, nothing happens for John Doe, right? So <clears throat> whenever a new chirp comes in, I keep wanting to call it a tweet, I want to basically populate that feed for all the other users that are uh, following that user, right? So again, I could reach for flows on this, uh, populate feeds. Now, at the scale of something like X or Twitter or Facebook, this is going to probably break really quickly. Um, because, you know, you could have millions of followers and, uh, <laughs> you're going to want to look at other solutions to scale this. But again, this is what we can build in an hour. So let's do that. So whenever an item is created, a chirp, we're going to do some logic on that, right? What are we going to do? Um, so as far as the logic, if we just map it out, right? New chirp, we're going to get the user from the chirp, user from the chirp, we're going to find all the users who are following that user, 
push chirp to their feed. All right, seems relatively straightforward. Uh, whenever this chirp occurs, right, now that we've got this flow set up, uh, let's just go and test new flow with save, go back to our flows, and now populate feeds, we should have a payload, right? We've got the content, we don't see the actual user um, that is in our accountability object, right? So we need to basically get a list of all the followers and their feeds. So how are we gonna do that? Uh, we are going to get a list of feeds. So we're gonna read data. Let's do like get feeds here. We'll do from the, we'll do full access. We want to basically get a list of feeds and the feeds here, we're gonna do a filter where the, uh, we wanna dig into this, right? So if we look at our other items, if we look at our data model, right? If we're getting a feed, there are, there's a user for that feed. And then we want to, inside the user, we have the followees. Um, actually, we want to get all the followers and then their associated feeds as well. Okay, so let's go through that route instead. So we're going to get a list of all the followers. where the follow e id is equal to the dollar sign accountability dot user and for that we're also going to get a list of fields and we want to dive in and actually go through the nesting here. So Directus allows me to basically populate all the relational data in a single API call. So we'll do the root level fields. And then again, if we're going through the followers, we've got a follower ID. So we'll do follower ID. That'll get us to the user dot feeds. Is that what we want? Follower ID dot feeds. And that should give us a list of the feeds that we want to populate. All right, let's test this out and see. All right, so if I chirp, the expected action here for this flow, it should give me like John Doe's feed ID. If I've got that set up right, right? Because John Doe has feeds here. All right, let's test it out and see. So we'll do show up in John John's feed. Let's we'll save. And let's go test this flow, right? All right, less than a minute ago. Let's populate. <clears throat> all right, so here's all of our feeds that we've got. We can see there's the feed, there's the, or those are the followers actually. Uh, and then we need to collate all these feeds. So I'm just gonna copy this over here into VS Code. And the next thing we're gonna do, we want to push that chirp into those feeds, right? So we're going to update a list of feeds and push the chirp into those feeds. All right, so as how we're gonna do that, uh, we will go in and uh, da, 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 da. so we are going to update the feeds and actually we probably need a like an intermediate here. So we're gonna return, let's format 
the feeds. All right, so if we look, we are getting, well, we got get feeds. So that's gonna be accessible through our data object as get feeds, right? So here's all the feeds, that is data.get underscore feeds. And in that feed, we're going to map through those. And we're going to return an array of the feed IDs that we want to push this tweet into. All right, so feeds to update equals feeds.map. Uh, this could be our feed. And then we're going to return what the feed dot follower underscore ID feeds the first item in that array feeds to update, and then we're just going to return feeds to update. Oop, got to spell that correct. All right, so just a little bit of formatting logic to make this easier. And then now what we're going to do, uh, let's call this get feeds ID, get feeds ID. And that should give us an array. And now we're going to update those individual feeds. So we'll do update feed, update feeds. The collection is going to be feeds from full access. And then as far as the IDs here, I'm just going to pass this array. So get feeds. Should have put IDs at the end of that, but no worries. And then we are going to do what? Can we do the, can we do the array syntax here? Create um, chirp ID. I think we can do this. So this is going to be an, uh, we need chirps. So that's the field that we're going to update within the feed. And then we're going to use the create update syntax here. So we do something like this, create. Uh, so instead of like modifying the value of these chirps, right, we're going to create a new record inside that array which is going to be what, what is that going to be exactly? So we'll go back. Chirps are in our feed. Chirps, a chirp is what? Oh, I'll just pass the chirp ID. The chirp ID is coming from what? Trigger dot key. Create dollar sign trigger dot chirp underscore uh, actually trigger dot key. All right. Um, Is this actually going to do what we want to do or not? We'll see. All right, uh, let's test this out, right? So now if we take a look at our feed, let's do this side by side. All right, so we'll go back over here. How are we doing on time? I don't know if we're going to get to the like any front end stuff on this or not. All right, uh, so we got our feeds, nothing in John Doe. Now if I chirp, Please show up in feed. Refresh. It's not, so there's something wrong with our logic here. Let's take a look at what's going on with this. So we got our feeds. 
run script syntax missing. Uh, forgot some type of feeds. Oh, of course, forgot a parenthesis. That'll always do it. All right, so let's just tr test again. Test again, please. All right, if I refresh the feed, do we have the feed? We don't see any chirps in that feed over here. So something else is going wrong. There's our invalid payload. Uh, must be of type one object. Uh, would it just be passing the ID? ID. Uh, let's add this and test again. Test one more time. Save. Refresh this. Okay. Okay. Did we test one more time? If I look at the feed... We've got a feed for John Doe. Mm, it's not exactly what I wanted. It's n pushing a new, uh, I guess that would be like update instead of create. Update. Let's look at the directus docs actually. Create update. Uh, that's gonna be adding items, I think. Creating multiple items. Uh, relationships. Where is this gonna be? Global parameters. Create an item, relational data. Okay. So assign the existing item to be a child of the current item. You can use the same structure to select what the related items are. Simply omit them from the array. So we just want to add an item in the array. You can provide an object detailing the changes. Like we don't want to create a blank chirp, right? So that's what happened here? No? Why is this chirp not showing any content? So it does show up in John Doe's feed doesn't show the actual content, which is weird. Let's just test one more time. So what is actually happening here? This is the chirp. Oh, duh, that's what's going on. Chirp underscore ID. Duh. So we're going to create, and it should be chirp underscore ID because we've got to go through the junction collection. All right, so we're going to create a new item. And if this should, is that going to solve this for us? Let's see. All right, chirp. We'll just test this. Feeds, we hit save. Now we see there's the chirp. Baller. Okay, 
So now that is working as expected, right? So if I now chirp, I'm the admin user and John Doe is following me. Follow me, John. I hit save. That chirp should show up in John's actual feed. Amazing, right? Doesn't show up in anybody else's feed. Awesome. Okay, so now that logic is working as intended. Uh, so we have all that working, create a feed of chirps. We've got to follow other users. We've got all this functionality, right? Um, let's try to put together something on the front end for this, right? Um, so what is this going to look like? Uh, I'm using Tailwind and I've got the Nux UI library inside this thing. Uh, Tailwind, Twitter, clone, maybe let's search for that. Uh, Tailwind Twitter clone pages, Tailwind clone with CSS. Hey, there we go. This is probably close enough, right? Uh, kind of looks a mess, but let's go for it. We're just going to copy this code. Uh, let's create a new page. We'll just call it feed.view. Uh, do some script setup. Oh, that didn't give me what we want. Script setup, lang equals ts. And all right, so now we're going to add this thing here. This is a giant mess of HTML. Let's just load up our user over here. Let's get logged in. Are we logged in right now? We're missing a tag somewhere. Div, div, div. Where is this thing? Oh, see, it's not even a particularly great clone because there's some missing div somewhere. Ah, uh, great. Uh, lots of fun. Don't ever trust these templates that you see online. Let's still, where's the issue? Is it that one little div there? Where is the issue div, 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 div? Yeah, you know what? Forget it. First tweet start. Uh, I don't even. I'm tired of messing with this. <clears throat> All right, so let's just go back to our index page. Uh, wasting too much time to actually get anything done here. All right, so we're gonna have a what list of tweets, chirps equals. Uh, we're going to use the await, use async data. Uh, we're going to give it a key. This is the user chirps, user feed. All right, and then we're going to do return. We're going to import our, our we're actually going to grab that from our use Nux composable. So use Nuxt app. Okay. We'll wait the user feed. And then we're going to import the read items from the directus SDK at directus SDK. <clears throat> and we're going to return directus dot request read items uh, do, 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 do. wait use async data 
turn, direct us read items, chirps. Uh, actually, we're going to get the feed. Where the... Actually, let's get all the chirps. Chirps where the feed uh, da, 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 da. so if this is my user and I've got the chirps mm, we want to get the feeds actually get the feed for my user where the uh, do I have the do I have a composable in here for the user? Where is my actual user state in this application? Let's take a look at our actual state. We have a user, we have a user ID. Okay, so we're also gonna do the the user equals use state. user okay <clears throat> and then we're gonna get all the chirps where the user all we're gonna get the feed where the user is the current user and actually like a, a lot of this could be controlled via access control here inside directus so i could just see i could see anybody's chirps i could create chirps can't delete any chirps um, but as far as the feed, I can only see my feed. Um, so let's just adjust this, right? The permissions, so I can only see my feed. So the user dot ID is equal to current user dot ID. All right. So now if I just do this, honestly, feeds, chirps, all right, we'll refresh, fail to resolve, directus SDK, at directus slash SDK. <clears throat> all right, so, and then maybe we'll just log those out, pre chirps. Do we see any actual chirps data? Oh, uh, actually going to return that. We need to deconstruct that. Chirps. OK. Uh, so there's our feed. And we actually want to see all the chirps that are in that specific feed, right? So now if we log in, I'm not exactly sure who I'm logged in as. And let's update our user role inside Directus to where we can at least read uh, the item permissions. We want to be able to read our own user. So ID equals current user. And what's that going to give us? Refresh. All right, so I'm not logged in. If I log in as John Doe here, I don't even know what password that I gave John. Uh, pretty sure I do know. Sample. Okay, so we're gonna go back. If we refresh, do we, what do we see? I'm not seeing anything actually. Default invalid user credentials. If we take a look at wait, use async data, data feeds. This is going to be the feed. Mm. 
just move this logic somewhere else. Killing me. Uh, okay. Index. Just go somewhere else with this. Nux link. Or uh, U button to feed to the feed Batman. All right, so there's our feed. Why don't I see any actual chirps inside there? To the feed, Batman. And we're also not getting this stuff on the actual server side as well. So that's a another thing to figure out. Uh, but our access control settings here are preventing us from seeing the actual feeds inside the, the chirps inside the feed. Uh, we probably want to be able to see followers or what as well. But if we go to the feed now, can we actually see any of this project to the feed? Just totally blow this away. We've got nine minutes left on this episode. I'm uh, really struggling here to kind of sort this one out. Um, so this is our user's feed. We should be able to see the actual chirps within that though. And I'm not sure why that is not showing up. So there's the feeds, direct as users. You know, if I were to just do something like this, localhost 8055 slash feeds, uh, should be like actually items slash feeds. So there I can see the actual chirps that are coming in. But is that because we got like caching going on here? Um, cache, is there like a cache? Uh, user ID. Okay, so now we can see the chirps, okay. Um, uh, let's actually show the chirps themselves fields ID. Uh, da, 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 da. We probably want the user information and then we'll get the chirps chirps and let's just get all the, the details of the chirps. Okay, so those are the, the, that's the junction collection. We really want the chirp dot chirp underscore ID dot star. Okay, so n now we've got a list of the chirps. Let's just iterate over that. We'll do a uh, div v4 Uh, what chirp in feed dot chirps and we can actually like maybe deconstruct this a little bit chirp underscore ID as the chirp uh, key is going to be chirp dot ID thank you then we have the chirp content uh, we also probably want the user ID from the chirps. We want to know that that specific user. Uh, and in that case, I'm probably going to need to adjust my permissions as well. So access control will go into users. For here, uh, we'll just allow all access, but let's just restrict certain fields, right? Uh, can't see anything except for the ones that I want. First name, last name, avatar. We don't want to show email. 
I will show ID. Followers, follow we. Okay. All right. Uh, chirps dot underscore ID dot user. Uh, what are we missing? Chirps feed dot chirps. Let's just back up a minute. Feed. Pre. Let's throw this up here. And I'm just going to like show this. Let's refresh the page. See what we got going on here. To the feed. All right, chirps, chirp ID as the chirp and feed dot chirps dot content. Hey, this should work. Not sure why it's not. Right? V if feed and dot chirps feed oh uh duh we gotta get the first item of the feed transform data Data dot zero. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, definitely a frustrating, frustrating run here. Transform data. That should give us what we need. Oh my gosh. Return, comma. Ah, uh, I'm still not. <laughs> I just still can't put this in the right spot, huh? Uh, what a mess. Okay, I think that that should have it now, and we've got a grand total of like three minutes left anyway. Do we have a feed? Yeah, okay, so <laughs> there's the chirps. Um, man, when we fail, we spell spectacularly sometimes. All right, um, so here we go. We've got our chirps. We're showing a feed of those chirps. We've got the user underscore ID. So if we refresh that, now we can see the actual user that is chirping about that. So then we'll have a um, div v4. Let's do like a flex, flex call. Give these some gap. Um, we'll give each tweet some padding. Uh, we'll show a div. We'll do the username. Username chirp dot user ID or underscore user ID. Admin user. There's all of my my actual feed. Great. And um, this is really really lovely. Um, now what if we wanted to actually chirp a bit, right? Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. we would create a new function, async function. Does it even actually make sense? We've got a minute 30 left. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this one a, 
fail for today. We're going to call this. Uh, we've got the direct us in set up really nicely on the, the front end. We just really struggled a bit. Um, you know, just an off day for me happens every once in a while, right? So we've got our chirps over here. Uh, the feed is, is working as intended, right? If I go in and if I were to set up another follower, like I, if Elon Busk follows me, admin user, save that. Obviously, like he needs a feed as well. Elon Busk, great. Um, and then if I chirp again, chirp for Edon, right, in his feed, we can see that one shows up. So <clears throat> there's our chirp. We can see that showing up there, which is nice. Chirp to Edon. That chirp also showed up inside John Doe's feed. So that part of it, we nailed UI. <clears throat> do the explosion here um 10 seconds left yeah I, I think this was a good exercise from a data modeling standpoint and kind of a how to put this together uh just wasn't all there on the front end today that's the way some of these things go uh, that's it for this episode of 100 apps 100 hours uh hope you'll join me for the next one we'll see you